Hello again, and for today, I am going to be delving back into the Groiper War. Uh, there's been at least one IRL story that I can cover before things return to normal that I would like to just get out of the way for the sake of uh, not losing this information because it was already hard to kind of find because it wasn't here in America. It was actually in Europe and in the UK. So I would like to discuss this one event before I get into the main topic of this specific Groiper Wars update. And that is at this uh, Turning Point UK event, which Turning Point UK is obviously the uh, English sister version of Turning Point USA. They kind of hold the same neoconservative opinions. They stump for the same uh, conservative party, which in the UK is the Conservative Party. It is the analog to America's Republican Party. And so these two organizations run the same kind of operations just in different countries. And so you would expect that after the giant success that was the Groiper Wars uh, <laughs> raids on the Culture War Campus Tour IRL events that Charlie Kirk was hosting with lots of guests, as well as the, the AF raids that were taking place on all of the Daily Wire staffers that dared to fucking uh, go out into the spotlight, that something like this would start happening all around the world to these kinds of neoconservative, cuckservative, lame institutions that are just, again, managing the decline. So there's this one guy on Twitter. His handle is at Keto Nationalism. He posts some pretty good stuff on, as far as the uh, the keto diet if you are a slave to uh, your proteins, kind of like I am. Um, this guy just asked a very simple question about the demographics of the United Kingdom and this Daniel Hannon, the British neocon that was the main focus of this talk, could not give him a good enough answer. And good on the guy, Keto Nationalism, for filming, even though Turning Point UK essentially tried to call him an ethnic nationalist and make him look bad, even though, again, he's just a kid. Like, what are you people doing? Why are you doing this to, to people who genuinely have hard questions? <laughs> you know? It, it makes you look weak. And, again, these... Uh, these British neocons clearly want to hold up the ridiculous hegemony that has led Europe so far into uh, the nightmarish hellscape that has become. And if the Europeans aren't willing to ask these questions, well, then Europe is gone. And that is something that I think a lot of my European listeners have to uh, at one point face. So you should really be careful with um, the way you treat this. But I would say keep going after these people. They need to be held accountable. I know there's that show that you can call in uh, LBC, Leading Britain's Conversation or, or whatever, that network. Uh, go in on whoever show that you don't like and just fucking rail them because this is the only way that the dialogue gets moved forward. So that is that small event that happened, I believe, on March 25th or around that time. And then we come to the main event in this commentary, the TikTok Wars. Now, the impetus for the TikTok Wars, from what I understand, is that uh, America First Students leader Jaden McNeil thought it would be a great idea to get a bunch of these groipers and uh, dissident right figureheads onto TikTok as a way to engage with the Zoomer audience because... For a lot of these guys, they would like to be very engaged with the Zoomers because it's their base. It's their largest demographic of people who support what they believe are usually Zoomers. So they led the charge onto TikTok. And by they, I mean Jake Lloyd, Nick Fuentes, and Jaden McNeil. Patrick Casey also has an account, but he was not hit anywhere near as fucking hard as the three that I just listed initially. Now, because of Nick Fuentes' audience size, he was able to bring in all of these people. And by these people, I mean his loyalist fan base of Groipers. 
And they successfully have driven up the metrics so dramatically based on the things that they normally talk about. That, you know, if you were to do the uh, the Google search uh, experiment on TikTok search results, you would see that, you know, all these topics were not really covered that widely. And then, boom, just spiked <laughs> And so, as a result of Nick getting his fan base to back this move, Nick does a stream on his channel calling out this uh, conservative and major quotes TikToker, Nick Videos, who is um, a wannabe Turning Point USA ambassador. And he has a friend, Lance Videos, who is a Turning Point USA ambassador. And so, you already see the... Um, the inevitable failings of what's going on here on TikTok is that they are, again, these multi-million dollar non-profits are trying to artificially inflate their ideology into these, these social medias, these little communities. And so th this is what the, uh, the conservative hype house, which is a political TikTok group, is really filled with. It's filled with lame brain Cato Institute studies. It's filled with ridiculous ideas about immigration and the LGBT question in conservative spheres. And so Nick calls this guy out for not really being conservative. And of course it just blows up. It has thousands of people staying on the live stream, even more importantly than joining live stream, staying on that live stream, listening to what Nick actually has to say. This gauges the political hype house overall's interest and then Nick Fuentes joins this like a hundred person zoom call that you know in includes liberals conservatives progressives communists you know you name it these people are there and they're trying to uh, essentially pwn Nick Fuentes and he's not really uh, that pwnable he cannot be dissuaded the same way that these people have obviously just completely um brushed nick videos and lance videos aside like they're nothing you know nick fuentes does live by the courage of his convictions and that makes him a worthy adversary in any debate and the best part i think is that you know lance starts agreeing with nick and then nick starts doing some star wars shit where he's like Join me, Lance. Together, you and I can put an end to Benny Johnson and his cringe memes. It's like, oh my god. I think I think the Lance guy might actually be at some point persuaded to leave. In the same way that Jaden was persuaded to leave in the middle of the Groiper Wars. is because he will see how disgusting Turning Point USA is inside and out. And, you know, I'm going to say this a lot in videos to come, but... If you have the dirt, you need to leak. This is going to be something that will be important in the culture war to essentially get rid of the bad actors. We've seen this happen very successfully with um, the crowd gate that happened where... Uh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to what crowd gate was. If you don't know, some for some reason, crowd gate was this very big internet drama that might not be... Um, all it seems to be, and I will cover when there is at least uh, five years distance from it, so that way I can really get into some kind of perspective. But moving back into this commentary, uh, obviously there are people out there in the world who are the internet hall monitors, and they were very mad, very mad at, at this uh, rise of Nick Fuentes' popularity on TikTok, which to them is, you know, something that can be easily controlled because it's controlled by the Chinese. So, uh, this one guy, Zachary P, I forget his last name, but it will be in the sources. Um, th this little fag <laughs> goes after TikTok for hosting these three guys, specifically Nick Jaden and Jake Lloyd. And they all get banned as a result. And Jake Lloyd is someone who doesn't really care if he gets banned, so he's not come back. Uh, Jaden has a second account, which I will not link to any accounts other than the dead ones because I do not want to be involved in any way in tracing into more bannings. But this resulted 
in them finding out that it is very easy to make another TikTok account. And so what they have done essentially is pulled together a bunch of like-minded individuals to do some fun stuff. And what was that fun stuff specifically? Well, last Friday, America First with Nicholas J. Fuentes was hosted exclusively on TikTok. You can get um, like D live streams to watch this and I will try to supply some of them for the limited time that they will be up in the sources. But essentially, Nick just did his show on TikTok and you know, a bunch of his fans were just flocking to this thing constantly. And, you know, when one account would get banned, another account would be sacrificed up to the point where he racked up at least five different bannings. And the final banning under account named Nathanicus, which, by the way, that dude rips. He's fucking awesome. Uh, I will make sure his YouTube is in the link because I, I recently followed that and he, he does some good stuff. Um, this guy... His account, while Nick was using it to do the stream, would not close out the stream. So there was some kind of weird glitch that happened in the middle of all of this that was really funny. It was just Nick streaming about his fucking most recent Lego Star Wars build that sent all the Gen Xers into a tizzy fit about how this guy's just a kid. It's just like, of course, he's just schmooting. He's just vibing. He's just being himself. He's being authentic. <laughs> so Nick finally quits to go do his D live stream and what is the result of the Groypers having invaded this platform? Well, let me tell you. There was one girl who tried to go after a Groyper. Uh, her name was Gabby Videos, I think. She has a bull ring. She's just one of these dumb zoomers who wants to be a millennial bitch so bad. And uh she tries to go after this guy and the Groypers invaded her to the point of her deleting her account. Now, I've heard from people like Jaden that this is apparently a tactic they do. Is, you know, when they when they feel the pressure applied to them, they will uh, feign outrage and then leave for a period of time. And then they'll come back later. So who knows if she's actually gone forever. But this bitch was crying on a fucking TikTok live stream about how I've been assaulted and ripped and it's like okay a self-defense situation is a joke about getting into a fight it's, it's a terms of service joke which is essentially when you're trying to evade the terms of service you make up this ridiculously politically correct statement that infers what you really want to say so it's basically a wink in the nod of the camera when you're making those kind of jokes so yeah, she leaves, but if you're to look up tags like Groyper, Groyper Army, Groyper Nation, Nick Fuentes, America First on TikTok, they have millions of views, which is crazy. It is fucking crazy that people have viewed this millions of times now, because it's like if you were to see the, the raw, you know, who's staying online thing, again, it's still in the thousands, but TikTok is built on this instant virality, you know, up to the minute, at the moment, and within the span of a week, not only were some of these counts boosted just beyond belief to getting these absurd numbers, but the actual videos themselves were also getting these absurd views. So this really goes to show that there is a movement burgeoning here that you cannot ignore because much like the neoconservative base ignored on the last time with the alt-right, you can see that this America first movement of young people is rising. It is inevitable. It will take over because of the sheer volumes of attack and the way that they are open to allowing people to come in because they also see the same problems. They are building these alliances. They are forging these bonds of brotherhood in order to destroy the neoconservative establishment. And the fact that these neocon dweebs do not pay attention to this shit shows how ineffective they are. And so, in conclusion, I think that the TikTok wars have begun. There will probably be more events further down the line on TikTok. 
but it all depends on what really goes on with these uh, political groups. Um, the the thing that I think also makes this more engaging than say like Politogram on Instagram is because this is all video based. So you're watching these people either in real time or in an edited format having to articulate their ideas. And of course, in the open marketplace of ideas, the best ideas usually win. So uh, that's going to be it for me on this channel. And so to Turning Point USA who thinks that they can influence their way into anything, well, you better tread lightly because the TikTok wars have been successfully won by the Groypers.